Yeah, okay. Had, uh, and I think this kind of relates in with our two, because I, I would put this one up there, but we'll see what Kevin thinks. What innovation in the past decade has changed bass fishing the most? That's a, that's a real good one. I, I would say the biggest thing that I've seen in my 20-year career has, has been uh, the quality of how good GPS is now, how accurate it is. I mean, you, the GPS is now, whether it doesn't matter if it's Lawrence or Hummingbird or whatever, if you want to mark a brush pile that's half the size of this table, it'll put you on the spot that small. I mean, they're that accurate. You know, you can take your, you can take a hummingbird and find a rock out in the middle of St. Clair, St. Clair, and it'll put you right over the top of it every single time. And uh, that, along with the Navionics, contour mapping, and side imaging, those, to me, those, those things right there, I mean, the sonar is, uh, sonar's always been good. I, I could, back in the day when I was using the flasher, I could read a sonar real well and see fish on it, tell the difference in fish and weeds. But now with side imaging and down imaging, it just it makes it a lot easier to do. And then with the GPS mapping, um, you know, it's totally changed how people fish offshore structure. Uh, the biggest thing about side imaging for me uh, was the learning curve of seeing how it shows what's under the water on the screen. And what taught me more about it than anything else, or how I learned with side imaging quickly, how to how to use it towards me, is fortunately we got a lot of really clear places. You know, I could go up to Grand Traverse Bay, where it's 20 foot deep, and look and see the rock break line or the grass or whatever, and then go inside image it and see how it shows it. You know, down south where the water's dirty, you don't have that ability. But that's probably one of the best ways to learn how to use how to to interpret side imaging is to to side image things that you know what's down there, a rocky point, a boat ramp, uh, things like that, to see how objects appear on the screen, because something that, you know, looks like a little bitty stump on there is as big as this table. I mean, it, that's the thing that you don't really realize is the size correlation until you start getting into it. And then the other thing is, is you think, well, heck, you know, this is awesome. I can go scan 150 foot right, 150 foot left. I'm looking at 300 feet. Well. You're, the farther you um, start to scan side to side with side imaging, the, the less the detail that you have. Um, you know, if you're just looking for blatant objects like uh, like you're out in the middle of St. Clair and you're looking for isolated rocks, yeah, you can you can scan out further. But if I'm looking for real detailed uh, structure or subtle bottom changes, or more importantly, I'm looking for schools of bass, um, you've got to look at a at a much more reduced area. But still, it's a huge advantage. You know, this year at the Kentucky Lake Tournament, when I fished there in the summer, um, all I did the whole time in my three days of practice is I went and just drove down these ledges. And I just would look at 50 feet, 75 foot max. And all, I'm, all I was looking for is, you know, if I can follow the GPS contour line on your Navionics chip to see where the channel was, uh, was at, I would just drive whether we're left or you know whatever side I was heading up river or down river and just look at that close range because on Kentucky Lake because there's current on those ledges those fish are usually going to be right on top of the lip or right off the edge so what I have on my boat is I've got a, uh, a unit in dash I had a 797 in dash and I just had that for GPS mapping just contour line and then on my 1197 I run a four picture screen with side imaging down imaging and sonar and go right down that edge, and with the side imaging and down imaging set, the side imaging set on you know 50 to 70 feet, uh, depending on how flat the area was, you know that I was looking at. I could actually go down through there and see the fish. And the one thing about Kentucky Lake that's a little bit different is, I mean, you're talking about a lot of bass there. That lake is incredible. It's got schools of fish. The schools that I found weren't just 10 or 15 or 20 bass. I'm talking about. 500 sitting on a spot the size of this table. I mean, unbelievable. I've never been to places, you know, a long time ago, David Fritz told me, he said, I, I throw my crankbait out there and then I can feel my crankbait hit the bass. Well, that's how it is at Kentucky Lake. When I find one of those good schools like that, you know, all you got to do is cursor over and drop a coordinate on it. You drop a waypoint on it with a hummingbird. And when you're, as you're coming up to it, the hummingbird has this, you can go to 50 foot or 100 foot. So you know you're 100 feet away from that. You see an arrow point right to that direction of it. Uh, and so I know the cast that I gotta make. So when you see them and you know they're sitting there, I'll just sit there and I'll throw. And a lot of times it may take 
30 or 40 casts with that crankbait to get one to trigger. And you can, like I said, when they're so thick like that, you can feel them. That's, and you never know if it's a spot they're feeding on or just holding on. But most of the places that I found them, there's no structural change, there was no depth change. I couldn't see any shell bed on my side imaging or anything. All I saw was the, the fish. And they show up as, they're, they're like white. I mean, you, when you see 500 of them, they, they kind of stand out. So I'd mark that and just, you know, knowing they're there, just keep making that throw. Pretty soon you trigger one and then you might catch 50 in a row, you know. Catch them two at a time, catch them, you know, snag in the back, things like that. So you just never, you never know. But side imaging makes, uh, makes me so much more efficient as an angler because instead of just driving before where I was looking with sonar and seeing, you know, if you're 15 foot of water, you're basically only seeing seven or eight feet max, you know, I mean, underneath what's underneath the boat. When you're out in a place like Lake Erie or St. Clair and you're looking for isolated rocks or weed clumps and things like that, if you can search 200 feet, 100 foot left and 100 right to find that kind of stuff, you know, it doesn't take long to, to see how much more efficient you can be. In the Bassmasters Classic last year, when I went into the back of that creek underneath that bridge, I'd found those fish there two years earlier when we were there. And it was really cold and I caught I caught a couple of big ones out of a little depression in this flat there. So I went there and practiced, and when I found those fish there, I got a bite back there. When I found those fish, all I did is I made three passes, and, and it's, it's five foot deep, it's the deepest spot back there, five, five foot deep. To me, it's seven, eight foot towards the bridge. But that's basically just a three to six foot flat all through there. And all I had to do was make three or four passes, and I found seven or eight different stumps and all I did is cursor over and drop a coordinate on each one of those and all that's all that's how I won the tournaments all I did is go round and round through the same little area fish two little two little small depressions and eight stumps and in a, a channel ditch and I just go back and forth and just try to let each one of those rest and without this you know with that side imaging just in that quick couple minutes I mean I found stumps that I thought I knew that area real well from fishing a couple years ago but I found all those other new stumps and that's how I ended up winning the tournament so it just, it made it that quick. In 10 minutes, I found stuff that I didn't even have any idea was there. <laughs> you know, get, uh, in, in addition to electronics, uh, we're going to kind of stay on that same thing. Uh, this is Paul Kelly. You out there, Paul? Give somebody to pull up here. Okay. Uh, are you, and I think this kind of ties in along with the technology, the new stuff, what's helping bass 